Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Shutter and welcome back to another garden tour. So it is currently the end of July. If you caught my last couple videos, you know that I recently went on a cruise to Alaska with my dad, which was fabulous, but it meant that I left my garden for at least a week or two in the hot, hot July heat. Um, since everything's on drip, everything had water, but without fertilizing and being deadheaded and just being maintained for that week, the weeds went insane while I was gone. I've been deadheading and just trying to kind of get things back in shape since I've been home. Uh, you might have seen some of those videos. The weeds literally, I think they might have won the battle because not only were they everywhere, they're still everywhere in the garden. I still have a lot to do, but sometime in all of that my finger I got a ant bite spider bite I don't know but my entire hand my finger swole up it was awful I had to go to the ER so the weeds have won I am currently out of commission uh, can't quite bend my finger let alone do a lot of maintenance so it's okay I'm fine and they were able to get my rings off they were able to uh, get it all under control but it means I am out of commission for a bit longer. So I'm going to go ahead and just give you a tour of what it all looks like right now. And then once I am back in the running for finger and hand mobility, we will get back to work. <laughs> Either way, we're going to start down by the shed and work our way across the yard. Let's get started. All right, y'all, so if you caught the weeding video, you know that all of this was overrun with weeds. Here's my poor finger. You can see after like three days, it's still still swollen, but uh, we're, we're working on it and it's a lot better than it was. So we still need to weed a bunch of things over here, but here's our Pop Star Endless Summer Hydrangea. This did get deadheaded and you can see she is putting on plenty of new blooms for us to enjoy. So that's fabulous. Our Texas sage is bloomed out, I think for the moment, but she's still growing. And our new rose standards are finally, well, not finally, they've been blooming since I planted them. You guys just haven't had a chance to see them yet, so. They start out this really deep yellow and then they fade into a beautiful butter yellow. And you can see they just like blooms, blooms everywhere. They are really showstoppers. I'm really glad I picked this variety. They are a knockout rose. I do need to go in and uh, shape them up a little bit. You can see like this arm right here. I'm gonna keep them in that lollipop shape. They're going to want to keep putting on new growth and getting really woolly. So we're going to have to do a shaping knockout rose standard video soon because they do need a little love. Now, our Twist and Shout Hydrangea, these are both endless summer. So Twist and Shout can get more like four to five feet tall and wide, whereas Pop Star only gets about two to three. So we've got the little one at the front, the big one at the back. They are both a lace cap variety. And you can see that depending on the soil, they'll look a little different, but they're both in that endless summer hydrangea family. Now our rows of Sharon's, remember we planted the two little sticks. This stick is killing it, literally killing it. This was our actual plant we planted. She's still doing fine. She needs weeded, but she's growing. And then our third one, what third one? Cannot find it. Unfortunately, through no fault of his own, my yard guy who comes in and mows all of this for me accidentally got it. He killed it. It was right over here. So I'm probably going to have to do another one and then come through and uh, you can see, there it is. There it was, here's my water plant a new one and uh, keep the weeds down, mark it a lot better. 
eventually this whole area will be composted and it will be very easy for him to tell. So in the meantime, we did some work on the butterfly bushes and the mums and just deadheading a lot of this. I'll put some pictures up. All of the lilies have bloomed for us. I got a few new things, a little Yorkie like my bitty and this beautiful uh, hummingbird thingy-mabob. I don't quite know how to describe it. It like hangs. I got them for my birthday and so I'm not sure where to put them yet. I just kind of put them both up here because they're right out of the car. Got dropped off for my birthday with my presents, popped them in and we're still deciding where to put them. I actually kind of like the dog here because such a cute little view with the shed and it's like she welcomes me home every time I get home just like Biddy would but I think the hummingbird needs to go somewhere down on that end of the garden so we will see while I'm up here I will say that the uh patients are still blooming but they're not as big as they could be the uh, foxgloves are starting to peter out the sweet alyssum is starting to peter out as well as the lobelia. These are all cooler weather things. And so sometimes in our zone, just eight B, the sweet alyssum and the lobelia will take a break in the heat of summer and will come back in August and reward us with more blooms through the cool part of the season. But on the other hand, the verbena, which loves hot weather, is just going to town, blooming her little head off. So we've got cool weather, hot weather, cool weather, and hopefully these two things will come back in the fall for us. So we're going to do just a uh, obligatory look because I have yet to clean out any of the, uh, oh man, I love any time I get to see hummingbirds or butterflies or anything and get video of it. That's so cool. Like I see them quite a bit. Is that the hummingbird feeder? Do you see him? I see them quite a bit just like this when I'm outside in the garden working. I enjoy it so much, but I very rarely get a chance to actually grab my camera and show y'all how fabulous they are in real time. And honestly, like as much as I love the flowers, I almost think they're not necessarily for me. They're for the hummingbirds and the butterflies and all of the, there's a dragonfly right now. Like I see frogs and different animals in the garden all the time. The garden is really for them as much as it is for me. And someone said once that if you, build your garden, grow your garden in a way that invites wildlife to actually come into the garden. Like there's nothing better than that. Oh, I see a huge swallowtail. It's the second one today. I'm having a good day y'all. All right, back to the, back to the garden. So cool. He loves that lantana. That's where I saw him earlier. All right, so back to the raised beds. I have yet to uh, clean them out or harvest anything from them since I've been back from my trip. So they are literally a hot mess. There are cucumbers the size of my head on this vine. I need to actually like cut them off and probably plant a new vine. A lot of the times in Alabama, in the South, when it's hot, um, you need to replant your cucumber vines in July. So look at that. This whole vine just is the worst. But on the other hand, my watermelon vines, my sugar babies are doing fabulous without me training them up the vines or up the, uh, supports for two weeks they've completely gone rogue but oh well so 
my butterfly bushes and my knockout rows, they're all doing great. I think the super tunias have given up the ghosts down here. This is the knockout rose I planted last year, whereas this is the one we just transplanted for that hydrangea this year. But I thought it was dead and he's doubled in size and putting out blooms. So by next year, he should be big again. Peggy Martin, Peggy Martin. So this on the fence is of course my Peggy Martin rose. She needs a little shaping, but she's growing. And then you can see there's still, there's a weed right here behind my one zinnia. My milkweed is actually growing fabulous. I cleared this whole spot out. I have two new snow bushes that I'm going to plant here. And we're just going to do a little bit of things uh, to hide the air conditioner over here. Over in the butterfly garden, things are going well. You can see lots of growth and pretty, pretty just... The dill and parsley is going great. And this right here, eaten all the way back. When we planted this for the swallowtail butterflies, the whole goal is that they find it, they eat it, they will lay their eggs near it, and you will get more swallowtails. And like I said, I've seen two today alone. So it's obviously working. And if they want to eat it, I've literally, I planted it for them. They can eat it all day. So there you go i think next year i think this is the parsley and this is the dill so i think next year we might need to plant more dill because they seem to have preferred that to the parsley and i could have easily planted a bit more of it now our one petunia the petunias are suffering this year which is crazy they're usually like this guy they're usually the hardiest thing but could have easily put some more gel in the middle if I had known that petunia wasn't going to love its spot. But, oh well. Gara needs trimmed back, but he's big and beautiful and still blooming. And I actually don't even mind it spilling out onto the path. I just <laughs> want it in the middle. Uh, but the bee bomb is growing in. The cone flowers. They're... They needed staking, and they obviously didn't get it, but honestly, they're still pretty, and the bees love them, so, you know. I need to come through and just deadhead some of the ones that are spent, and then it will help push more and more and more flowers, but, you know, as long as those honeybees are coming, as long as all of the pollinators are still enjoying them... That's really the goal, isn't it? All right, so my pink, these are the unplugged salvia. They're doing fabulous and filling in. You can see that sweet alyssum, I think, needs to be sheared back just a little. Oh, I keep forgetting I can't do that. Hopefully, after a shear, she will come back for us in the fall because right now she is on the struggle bus. Likewise, the verbena down here, which is a perennial verbena, is on the struggle bus. And our hydrangea is pushing out new growth, but she bloomed beautifully. And now I think she's done, hopefully not for the whole season, but for the moment. Either way, all of the beautiful greens in this area are looking fabulous. I will put some clips up of our foxgloves because you guys know I planted in our milk jugs we grew a million beautiful foxgloves this year. They all bloomed. Of course, the one week I was gone, I was so disappointed, but my mom did get a little bit of footage for us. So I will pop that up on the screen right now and you can enjoy it. Foxgloves are biannuals, which means they will come back next year and we will plant more for next year. They're not, we will still get to enjoy them, but I'm disappointed I only got to see them at the very beginning of their blooming uh, glory this year. So, here you go. All right, as far as these zinnias go, you know, we deadheaded all of them. 
you can see they have pushed new growth and are already putting up new blooms and buds. Zinnias just really keep going. I cut them all back to about here. My mom said I should have cut them back to about here. So we may still do that because they are really on the struggle bus in the middle there. So from there, we've got some salvia and our other sweet alyssum in here. We've got our wisteria that needs retrained up the tree just a little bit. All of our foxgloves in this area have bloomed and the lilies have bloomed. So next year, these will all put out second year spikes and be much bigger. Now our, our sweet little uh, pincushion flowers that have been here for two years this one that's dead was the biggest, best, prettiest one. It was like three times the size. And for some reason, it has completely died back. So I don't know. I might, I, I'm not going to pick these up, but I might try transplanting them further into the shade. I think they just don't love the sun as much. Makes no sense to me because moms are literally in full sun at her house. But the zinnias all got a haircut and they are pushing new growth. I still need to transplant some of these front ones. You can see the butterflies and the bees just literally love them. All of the ones outside of the black are uh, self seeders from last year, the zinnias I had in this bed. So I'll be transplanting as many of those as will live down here where we planted three of them. These I grew and the milk jugs from seeds I saved from last year. So I'm going to go ahead and plant this whole little area with some and maybe in amongst the foxgloves we'll see. I'm not quite sure yet what I'm going to do. The foxgloves I usually interplant with gumfrina, but this year it was just so hot we kind of missed our window. So it may just be what it is for this year. The lantana though is doing fabulous and it is putting out lots of new blooms. You can see how big they've gotten, which looks a little off scale for this space right now. But in the next year or two, when these comb flowers are up three feet tall, the scale will make a lot more sense. Either way, after not getting anything to grow here in the heat for the last two or three years, I think we finally found a winner. These obviously are loving it and they should come back for us. So if they keep coming back, they keep loving their life here and everything else can just grow up around it. That'll be great. Don't look at my sad hand. <laughs> Here's our snow bushes. Look how pretty these are. They're a variegated pink snow on the mountain bush. And I got them on clearance at the garden center for $8. So they're supposed to get five tall by three to four wide. I'm going to go put them down near the air conditioner as a beautiful backdrop to that kind of area. I don't want to have to fill in a whole huge space there, but I do want some color and to hide the air conditioner. So I think these will be a beautiful backdrop. Then we've got the right side of the garden. Now, as you can see, the white crepe myrtle is just starting to bloom for us very late this season. And I do want, before we get started, to show you that up, 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 our twilight maple, is that right? Our beautiful twilight crepe myrtle with the purple leaves is finally blooming for the season, that hot, hot pink. This is the whole reason I bought it, that purple foliage and the pink blooms. And I'm so excited. I cannot wait until it has a bigger canopy up here. But, you know, it's looking great for this year. I'm just excited to finally see crepe myrtle blooms. Our bigger twist and shout is looking gorgeous and putting out a new round of blooms. All our super tunias are on the struggle bus. I need to just come shear them all back, let them put out new pretty buds for fall. Same down here. More pincushion flowers and salvia. 
that Verbena is doing great. And our, uh, we have three cone flowers here that are wildberry. They're a smaller variety, as well as pentas. Some things that grew in, like the pentas last year, filled in this whole area <coughs> really prettily, are still just so small this year, and I'm not sure why. You know, it is what it is. On the other hand, the catmint has really spread out. It is probably bloomed out for the season, but it should bloom out beautifully next season. And since the homestead verbena here, you can see all of the uh, weeds I haven't got to yet, but the homestead verbena here has been here for three years and it's so small and still just hardly there. So if, if the catnip wants to spread in this whole area, we're just going to let it. The foxglove is blooming. The knockout roses are blooming. I think the Laura Pedlum needs to be trimmed back uh, this season, but it is beautiful. I still love this like variegated purpley burgundy color, but I think the whole thing needs to be sheared back and over to keep these in check a little bit. They are blocking out a lot of the sun for this butterfly bush that still needs deadheaded. The Gumfrina, these are the raspberry cream we grew from seed. They're doing fabulous. Lantana is doing fabulous. Everything under this tree is a bit of a weeds, 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 weeds. Oh man, that's a lot of weeds. Okay, well, when we are fixed, we will come clean it. More foxgloves doing well. All of this with a little bit of a shear and a little bit of fertilizer should be fine. If I hadn't lost the fertilizer so much, I would think it'd be fine. But honestly, mom never fertilizes hers and they are still big and glorious at her house. So I'm not sure what the difference is. The super tunias at my house this year are just not loving their life as much as they usually do. They're not dead. So, you know, and they usually come back in my zone. So we're just going to leave them, see what happens. Now talking about something that loves its life, all of these things, this is a, a rosy returns daylily, some more lantana. We've got zinnias that were supposed to be shorter and really bushier. I'm not loving those here. We will probably not do that next year. I think honestly, if I knew then what I know now, I would have just carried on these impatience all the way in front of this. But this red wine salvia or saucy wine salvia, it is amazing. It is huge. It is loving its life. Love that. We're going to let it keep going. And got things like our peonies really growing wonderfully. We've got lupins still coming up. Hopefully those will bloom for us in the next couple years. We've got all of our cyclamen tubers putting out wonderful leaves. And hopefully those will just continue to fill in and bloom over the next couple of years. We just planted these this spring, which is late for planting cyclamen tubers. So even next spring, you know, they should really, I just want a whole carpet of these beautiful variegated leaves. And we have two types. So we have the tall pink variety, which we planted two of every couple feet. One, two, one, two. Those are the bigger ones. And then all these little leaves that are just coming up were tubers and they are a small purple variety. So we should have just a pretty carpet of those variegated leaves with the little fairy skirts. They'll be beautiful. Foxtail ferns, a bunch of them have died. They never came back from last fall when we planted them. So we'll plant some more of those eventually. And that's about it. We do have the Vitex down here, which eventually will fill in this whole area. It has not bloomed for us, but this is its first season and it's about tripled in size. So I'll take it. I don't want to have to fill in this whole area. I'm not going to put grass seed over here but this guy can get 20 to 25 feet wide. 
So he should fill in this whole area. My mom has two Vitex that in one season have like, I don't even know, like gigantic size now. I'll show you when we do her garden tour next. But I have a lot of hope for that little guy to fill in that space. I got him on the clearance rack. So winner, winner, chicken dinner. I'm going to go inside and uh, cool off because it is humid out here. When is it not humid in Alabama? And I will see y'all in the next video. I'm going over next after I cool off to film mom's July garden tour. So if you want to see everything going on in her garden, that will be up shortly. In the meantime, I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.